team keep it clean we are that much closer to the ravens dolphins game and again like i told y'all before y'all know that these the dolphins games with the ravens they are just that much more special to me personally y'all already know what the situation is but since this game is so special and since having a guest on to talk about the dolphins was so nice i had to do it twice i had to do it twice it, it, it was only right. And this guest that we're bringing on, he's very familiar with the Dolphins. He covers the Dolphins in season, out season, whenever. Let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. The team keep it clean very very special guest in the building and talking about these miami dolphins was so nice that i had to do it twice you know we had td fins talk on a couple days ago and now i got my boy dougie so Doug, let, first let everybody know where they can find you at and exactly what it is that you do on your youtube channel youtube.com slash dougie do wrong uh, i cover the miami dolphins year round don't matter otas training camp pre-draft post-draft playoffs hopefully I cover hey. the Miami Dolphins year round you never know I saw somebody put out some um some like super weird stat that was like oh the Dolphins uh, nobody's won more games than the Dolphins like over the last 36 games something like that yeah something like that yeah <laughs> like, like <laughs> people they'll come up with stats for anything but anyway one of the most important stats that matters uh in football in the National Football League is a win uh, yep. If your team won a loss, and last week the Dolphins won against the Patriots, uh, what what would be the the your favorite thing that you saw from that game last week uh, against New England? Defense. The, the, the Dolphins' defense did whatever they wanted to against that Patriot offense. At first, the Patriot offense was moving the ball; they were kind of running, uh, and it was frustrating me a little bit. Their run game started going, and the Dolphins made the adjustments they needed to. Second half, completely shut down the run game, completely shut down the offense. That and the speed. Tyreek Hill did whatever he wanted to against that Patriot defense. That man was open left and right. So those are the two things that I noticed the most. That I was like, all right, well, this is something here. <laughs> mm, well, yeah, that's uh, that's good to hear. Tyreek Hill was open all day. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a repeat. Now, on the flip side, you talked about what you liked the most. What, what didn't you like? What, what, what did you dislike the most in that Patriots game? Um, the the offensive line still struggled a little bit at the beginning. That right side of the offensive line allowed too much pressure. Mm -hmm. Will showed flashes, but he still had that inconsistency that he needs to work on. He missed a few passes mm -hmm. that he should have hit. Um, and the run game wasn't going as much as I wanted to. So most of the disappointment for me came from the offensive side of the ball. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I like that. I, I, that's that's good news to my ears and us Ravens fans too. Um, now, uh, with Tua specifically, what would you say? Because I mean, I, I've heard, I, I listened to that clip from Ryan Fitzpatrick probably about two, three times, um, where he talked about, uh, and I, I love how he put it too, because I never thought about it like that when he was talking about what it takes to be a top 10 quarterback. And he was like, you, you really need to be elite or special at, at something. Um, what would you say to his biggest attribute right now as a quarterback is his most special attribute? Probably what Fitz said with his anticipation is accuracy. Mm -hmm. he, he knows where to put the ball to help his receiver out, like that touchdown pass to Jalen Waddle on fourth and seven. Mm -hmm. He put that ball exactly where it needed to be for Waddle to catch it, keep running, and then avoid the three tacklers around him. Okay. That, to me, if he can keep being elite in that category, will excel him. Um, he just has to trust it more. It seems like sometimes he doesn't trust himself. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's big. Uh, and speaking of big trust, um, Lamar Jackson, Ravens quarterback, uh, what do you see from him that he where he could take advantage of uh, Dolphins' defense? The Dolphins always, and it's been for years, even before Brian Flores, have had such a hard time with mobile quarterbacks. For some reason, I don't know if it's they, they would prefer to send pass rush than put up a spy. But for some reason, whether it was Michael Vick, whether it was Vince Young, whether it was 
It didn't matter who it was. If the guy was mobile, the Dolphins had a hard time containing him, mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, because once they get outside the pocket and the play starts to fall apart, your corners don't really can't really cover these receivers if the routes are, you know, running all over the place. So to me, that's what worries me the most with Lamar. If we can't contain him and allow him to extend the play, he's an arm to throw it wherever he wants to. So yeah. to me, that's the my biggest worry is contain him in the pocket and don't let him extend the play. I mean, I, I wish that would have been a problem for the Ravens. I mean, for the Dolphins in the Ravens game last year, but <laughs> we, we 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 saw how that went. Now, um, Ravens offensive line in that game. Uh, I mean, really, the whole team was in shambles, but the offensive line it was very ugly. Uh, to watching that game from last year. Uh, but the Dolphins right now, um, I know they have some injury issues uh, with both their left and right tackle. Do you have any updates on that as of now? Uh, from what I'm hearing, Teron Armstead, it was a, a toe issue, but he also had a vet rest day. So I'm, if mm. my assumption's right, he should be okay. Um, but Austin Jackson might not play because it's more of an ankle issue. So... That one, I feel like Torrin Armstead's more likely to play than Austin Jackson. Um, the Dolphins even did bring in a right tackle from, I think, Seattle he was from um, to kind of bolster up that offensive line because they definitely need that help. Mm, okay, okay. Well, ho yeah, hopefully nobody steps on anybody's toes then. Uh, <laughs> they have those issues. Don't play dirty, Ravens. Don't do it. I know they, they might be tempted to, but don't do it. Now, um, you got Tyreek Hill. On one side, and you mentioned how he did whatever he was wanted to do, wide open. You got Jalen Waddle uh, on the other side, and Jalen Waddle. I remember, I think it was um, was it on I Am Athlete? Maybe yeah. it was where, where he talked about that. He felt he might be faster than Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Um, and then well, who who's gonna be? Because you know, Ravens are gonna be keeping eyes on those guys, and hopefully they can hold them down. But who's that other receiver uh, that could possibly step up? Cedric Wilson Jr. Or Sherfield, um, number fourteen. He was in. He was with the 49ers. The Dolphins brought him in. He's their fourth receiver. Another guy who um, you don't really hear, right? Especially with Cedric Wilson Jr. You know, you heard splashes here and there with him with the Cowboys. He comes here. He's got that. He's got that ability to take the plays, take it over the top. Especially if you're focusing mm -hmm. on Hill and Waddle. Um, and like I said, Sherfield, he 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 made some really good plays in the in the preseason that mm -hmm. got him on the team. So those are two guys that if you're really focusing on stopping um, Hill and Waddle, you're gonna probably get hurt by them. And even the running backs, especially in the past game, you got to mm. keep an eye on them as well. Oh, now that has been something that Ravens have struggled with over the years: uh, running backs uh, in the past game, because there could be times when they'll have everything covered, everything locked up, and I'm like, all right, let's go. And then somebody will check it down. And you know, oh, they it just it can be frustrating. But um, you talked about Tyreek Hill, Waddle, uh, Wilson, and Sherfield. Mm -hmm. Sherfield, okay, and those are all guys that can score touchdowns. But on the defensive side, last week uh, y'all had a touchdown by uh, Melvin Ingram. How has he and the Dolphins' pass rush looked? Good. Um, mm -hmm. Very happy. Consistent pressure on Mac Jones and Trey Flowers didn't even play. He was oh, yeah. inactive because they just brought him in mm -hmm. two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. Um, so once he gets incorporated, he got that rotation going. It's mm. going to be real dangerous, especially with this, uh, Sealer and Christian Wilkins getting up front. It's going to be real dangerous. Oh, then that is a familiar name right there. Because, yeah, he, he, he was drafted by the Ravens, Zach. <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah, he – I guess I don't know what happened. I just I remember, always remember him being super strong, and mm -hmm. but I guess they, they could never find a place for him, but he found a home in Miami, and it, it apparently had been working out. So good for Zach. Now, um, we talked about offense. We talked about some defense. Uh, the, how has the Dolphins, and I know it's only been one game, but how has the Dolphins special teams been? And even if you got to mix in a little bit of preseason, how, how has Dolphins special teams looked? Good. Surprisingly really good. Um I don't want to talk about Sanders because I'm a huge, I'm superstitious. I'm extremely superstitious, so I'll leave that alone. <laughs> when it comes to punt and kick uh, coverage, really good. Mm -hmm. Not really allowing much because last year they were really bad at it, allowing big chunk plays and allowing mm -hmm. the opposing teams to get to their own 40, 50. Um, but now they're really you know clamping down on that, only allowing you know eight yards a you know a gain on kick and punt returns. So doing really good there, and Morstead 
that guy's got a leg on him, and I'm very happy they brought him in. So Tom, is it Thomas Boston? Yeah. Oh, from what the Saints, I think. Where yeah. Was he at? Okay. Yeah, he's like a like a twelve year vet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's been around for a long time, man. <laughs> like, but hey, that that's the thing about kickers and punters and and some quarterbacks, of course, they can play forever because they yeah. don't really get hit like that. So I might have to tell my son, hey, if you want to be a kicker or punter, just let me know. <laughs> so he can still make his money or whatever, but don't got to take the beating. Exactly. But anyway, um, predictions for this game at m t Bank Stadium. We remember how last year went. But we also remember how years in the past went, too, and how it usually goes. But last year, hey, y'all, y'all got the most recent victory. And it's all about what you have done for me lately. This Sunday at 1 p.m., how do you think the Dolphins are going to do it? How do you think the game is going to turn out? The Dolphins are historically one in seven in your stadium. The last time the Miami Dolphins beat Baltimore in that stadium was 1997 with Dan Marino. Whoa. Um, it's been a very long time since the Dolphins won in that stadium. Could it happen? Of course it could happen. Anything could happen. Um, I think it'll be a close game, but I don't, I, this is a game I had the Dolphins losing. Um, hmm. Lamar Jackson, I just think is going to give us a fit. Um, and I don't know if Tua can match the amount of production that Lamar might put up, especially with Byron being hurt. So essentially we have X shutting down only one receiver. Oh, yeah. um, so to me personally, um, it hurts me to say it, but I'm going to, I'm going to give the Ravens the nod. I'm going to say 24, 21. Okay. So a three point game. Yeah. I can see that happening. I, I as well think it's going to be one of those close, stressful, nail biting, aggravating, <laughs> uh heart wrenching games uh because I just I, I I like the moves that the Dolphins have made this offseason. I love the aggression and it's like with the Dolphins, I felt like uh after they got Tyreek Hill, I'm like, all right, they, they getting ready to chill for a little minute. Then out of nowhere they signed uh Armstead. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, all right, well they still trying to make moves. Um so we'll see how it goes, man. But again, appreciate you coming on the channel as Definitely. always. Um Hopefully, uh, the Dolphins and Ravens they could keep playing every year because I, I I love these games are like really special to yeah, me. Dolphins yeah. and Ravens. Um, so before we get out of here, let everybody know one more time where they could find you at. You can find me anywhere with the name Dougley Do Wrong. It's very peculiar. Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. Dougley Do Wrong. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on. Thank you for taking the time. Team, keep it clean. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to his channel, and we out. Yeah. Like a dream, and you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got a made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean.